On the 2nd of August, 1100, William II, King of England and the second son of William the Conqueror, was out hunting in the New Forest when he was struck by an arrow and killed instantly. While some believe it to have simply been an accident, there are many that have attempted to find greater meaning in his death. We are currently standing next to what is arguably the most important memorial of William II's death, the Rufus Stone. In the 17th century, King Charles II had identified the tree from which he believed the arrow to have deflected and killed William. This was then replaced in the 18th century by the stone. Um, and the stone itself reads, Here stood the oak tree on which an arrow shot by Sir Wilder Tyrrell at a stag, glanced and struck King William II, surname Rufus, on the breast, of which he instantly died. And this really depicts the popular account of William's death. This idea that the arrow had deflected off a tree, instantly killing William, and really shows how the story has transpired over time. In the Middle Ages, hunting accidents were common. William II's brother Richard had been killed in a hunting accident, and his nephew Richard had been killed in a hunting accident earlier that year. So if hunting accidents were so common, why did William II's death arouse so much suspicion? Firstly, I think it's important to consider what type of king William was and what his kingship entailed. There have been a multitude of opinions about William, but the majority are negative. For example, David Hume called William a violent and tyrannical prince. Sidney Painter described Rufus as a thoroughly unpleasant person, and Austin Lane Paul argued that from a moral standpoint, William was probably the worst king that has ever occupied the throne of England. So why has William been portrayed in such a negative light? William secured the English throne in 1088. A revolt by the nobility had attempted to displace William and put his brother Robert, Duke of Normandy, on the English throne instead, in order to unite the two kingdoms. However, Robert's absence from England and William's rallying of support allowed him to secure his authority and the English throne. In 1091, William invaded Normandy, crushing Robert and his forces, and William also repulsed an invasion by the Scottish King Malcolm III. In 1092, William built Carlisle Castle and took control of Westmoreland and Cumberland, previously Scottish territories. When Malcolm responded by ravishing Northumbria in 1093, William's forces ambushed Malcolm and his son Edward, killing them both. In 1096, William's brother, Robert, joined the First Crusade, pledging his Duchy of Normandy to William in return for 10,000 marks, which William raised through a heavy and much resented tax upon England. As regent, he campaigned in France from 1097 to 1099, securing northern Maine and continuing to ferociously pursue a warlike defence of his French possessions. Uh, William was a king who was rather unlike the other kings who reigned near him. So I think some of, some of the responses that he, that he generates are therefore very different from his contemporaries. Because in many ways he is quite a military king and he's very much involved in the kind of culture of warfare and early knighthood. But at the, and, and, and kind of to balance that, um, he's in many ways somewhat disconnected from the church. And this is sort of quite a big thing because for so many kings at that time, um, the influence of religion and Christianity is what really forms their basis for viewing themselves, their basis for viewing how they see what their rule means. And so the fact that William is a little bit outside that, that he doesn't put a very high value upon things the church does, makes him rather an unusual king for the late 11th century. It is clear that William was a strong and successful war leader, and that his reign was characterised by continuous campaigns for greater authority and territory. However, in turn, the burden of his wars fell heavily on the English people, causing many to view him as tyrannical. This is emphasised in the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle, where William is characterised as always harassing this nation with raiding and with excessive taxes, and that this was a great injustice to the English people. This is the Great Hall in Winchester, a very social space where William would have spent most of his time. 
This would have served as a multi-purpose space, a place to socialise, but also a place for William and his men to live and sleep. To fund this extravagant lifestyle, as with his war campaigns, William would have resorted to heavy taxation. William has not only been depicted in a negative light solely due to the burn of his wars and campaigns on the people, William was also hated due to his frequent conflict with the church and his exploitation of it for his own personal gain. In 1089, William lost his father's confidant and advisor, Lanfranc, Archbishop of Canterbury. After Lanfranc's death, Edmer emphasised how grievous calamity overtook the churches of England as William delayed appointing a new archbishop and began expropriating ecclesiastical revenues, exploiting the church. The extent of this was also highlighted by Edma, who claimed that William, having estimated what was needed for bare subsistence of the monks that served there, all the rest he ordered to be taken into his own hand or let out in rent. This clearly demonstrates William's ill-treatment of the church and exploitation of it for his own personal gain. Not only has this animosity between William and the Church heavily influenced the portrayal of William's reign, it has also affected perceptions of his death, as it caused ecclesiastics to view William's death as a judgment of God, an act of divine intervention for his abuses and conflict with the Church. For example, Eadmer claimed that when William was struck by an arrow, that it was by the just judgment of God that William was stricken down and slain. Similarly, in the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle, William is presented as being abhorrent to God, just as his end showed. This really emphasises the common belief among ecclesiastics that God was responsible for William's death and that this was an act of divine intervention for William's abuses and conflict with the church. Prophecies of William's death also emphasise ecclesiastics' belief that William's death was an act of divine intervention for his impiety. For example, in Orderic Vitalis, William is warned that a monk had a vision in which a shining virgin threw herself at the feet of the Lord Jesus. She then implored him humbly with prayers and asked him to look with pity on your wretched people groaning under William's yoke. Avenger of all crimes, take vengeance, I implore you on William. To which the Lord replied, Wait a little while, for before long you will be fully avenged of him. William then takes no heed of this warning and is killed shortly after in the New Forest after being struck by an arrow. Although this holds little merit as a factual depiction of events, it is an important moral story as it emphasises Ecclesiastic's belief that William's death was the result of his conflict with the church and exploitation of it. In recent years, the idea that William was murdered has become compelling and gained credibility, with individuals like his brothers Robert and Henry being named as potential culprits. If William was the victim of the murder plot, who was to blame and what would motivate someone to want to kill the King of England? Most commonly blamed for the death of William Rufus is Walter Tyrrell, a prominent nobleman and lord of Poire de Picardy in France. It was Tyrrell who accidentally struck William through the chest with an arrow during the fateful hunt of the 2nd of August 1100 in the New Forest. However, the accidental nature of the killing has been brought into question. Walter Tyrrell is thought to have been a keen bowman, which makes the possibility of a poorly shot arrow appear far less plausible. Upon the death of Rufus, Tyrrell immediately fled across the Channel to France and never returned to England. To some, this behaviour has meant that Tyrrell is deemed worthy of suspicion. However, finding a motive for Tyrrell to have murdered his king is much more difficult. Tyrrell had held a prominent position in the court of William Rufus, and there is little reason to believe that he would have had any cause to sacrifice the wealth and reputation he had gained in order to kill the man who would have initially awarded him these titles. William of Malmesbury reports that Tyrrell was on the friendliest terms with the king who had brought him from France into his court in England. Tyrrell continued to deny that he shot the king at all, and that he had not even seen Rufus on the day of his death, maintaining his innocence even when he had nothing to fear or gain. 
This creates even more doubt surrounding his involvement in the killing. Naturally, experts have also examined the involvement of the man who stood to gain the most from William's death, his younger brother, Henry Beauclerc. Henry, who once threw a man from a tower to his death, was not a man troubled by moral issues. And as William Rufus had produced no heirs to inherit the throne, a motive for Henry to contribute to the murder can easily be found. It would certainly appear significant that upon William's death, Henry rode straight to the treasury at Winchester, rather than turning to his brother's body, which was left for local peasants to transport. His immediate action could therefore be perceived as evidence of a premeditated plot to kill William, as it seemingly indicates a certain level of preparedness for the event. Robert Curthos, Henry and William's elder brother, and therefore next in line for the throne, was on his return to Normandy from the First Crusade in 1100 when William II died, and is thought to have made an arrangement with William before his travels, whereby each was the other's heir, should anything happen to them. This hasty action from Henry could be perceived as evidence of an effort to secure the throne before it was lost to Robert, who already had a son, and therefore an heir, that could remove Henry's final chance to gain the throne. Looking at sort of the, 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 the personalities, the behaviours of other people around him, the one who was the most chillingly cold and exploitative is William's younger brother. Because Henry, who's the man who succeeds him as king, is someone who's, whose loyalty to his family is quite low. This is someone who imprisons his brother for decades, who allegedly has, has his nephew blinded as a punishment. So family loyalty is not, is not especially high. He's someone who is um, uh, who is um, sufficiently um, uh, interested in power that on William's death he largely stages a military coup to seize England while his brother is sort of still, still sort of uh, uh, not yet in, in his grave. So I, so I think if anyone's behaviour looks suspicious, it's mostly Henry. However, even those that subscribe to the belief that Henry was involved in the assassination of his brother do not believe that he was the man to fire the arrow that killed him. Most consider the possibility of a wider plot involving both Walter Tyrrell and Henry. Some connections between the two figures have been found, which has led some to suggest that Tyrrell was rewarded by Henry for the killing. Indeed, the Giffards and Clares, two powerful families with connections by marriage to Tyrrell, did have places in Henry's court once he gained power. However, Tyrrell himself had no direct involvement in Henry's rule, and there is no evidence to suggest that he was ever rewarded or punished for the king's death, thus providing no real reason for his involvement in a deed with such wide-ranging and potentially dangerous consequences. It has also been noted that it was a common practice to secure the treasury at Winchester as quickly as possible following the death of the king, thus making the argument that Henry was prepared for the killing far less likely. Motivations for the killing of William Rufus can also be found outside of those present in the New Forest when he died. William's older brother, Robert Curthos, had been denied the kingship of England upon the death of their father, and was instead given dominion over Normandy, whilst Rufus gained control of the English crown. It is therefore theoretically plausible that Robert, who, returning from the First Crusade, had orchestrated the killing and intended to claim the throne when he reached England. However, there is little to connect Robert and Tyrrell, and since there are no other alternative assassins who are known to have been in the New Forest to carry out this deed, this theory is a purely speculative one. Although the debate around Rufus's death has generally focused on it being purely an accident or the possibility of murder, the ambiguity surrounding his death has given rise to some rather bizarre theories, fueling the controversy even more. An example of this is the emergence of the witchcraft hypothesis and the involvement of the supernatural being connected to Rufus' death. Some historians believe William Rufus to be a divine victim, a member of a pagan witch cult which follows the old religion. He was perceived by this cult to be a god in human form and had to sacrifice himself to revitalize the earth. Considering William's impiety, 
it makes his membership to a non-Christian cult seem more likely. William's death also fell one day after the pagan tradition of Lammas, a festival celebrated by the old religion, where sacrifice was a common feature. However, despite the attention this theory has received, the evidence used is largely unreliable, with the majority of the evidence used being written several centuries later. There are many that speculate this theory originated from ecclesiastics, who intended to betray William, their enemy, in a negative light. We do have a chronicle account that talks about the deathbed confession of the man who shot him, who just presents it as being a terrible mistake and an accident. But I think what's interesting about it is that time and again, over a really very long period of time, so many people have looked at William's story and have wanted to see something going on there, that there's a sense that people want to see significance in his death. And so we, we have had all these conspiracy theories about his brother, about the King of France, about other people who might have benefited from William's death. The death of William Rufus generated one of the earliest and most compelling murder conspiracies in history. But what do you think happened to William? Do you think his death was simply an accident? Or do you think there is greater meaning behind his death?